and welcome to another edition of Pelham School District Today. Today we have a number of our fifth grade teachers from Pelham Elementary School as well as our principal, Tom Adamakis, and to my right is Jillian, come here, uh, Joe Harris, and Mary Beth Hebert, and to my left, Nikki Robertson, and Carrie Struth. So welcome, thank you very much um, for coming to talk with us. I'm very excited about what we're going to talk about today. So I'll actually get us started. So it's called Lead to Succeed Initiative in our fifth grade. And uh, Nikki, why don't you start us off with what is Lead to Succeed? Yes. So Lead to Succeed is a program that we saw last year and we thought, a couple of us, that this was a great opportunity to teach the whole child and not just specifically the academics. It's a lot of these soft skills like shaking a hand, looking someone in the eyes, and making sure that they're really prepared for the real world in addition to all of the curriculum that we cover. So why, why was Lead to Succeed created? I think it was a reflective action of watching our students at their graduation last year when they sort of schlepped across the stage, didn't know how to dress for success for an important occasion, didn't know how to shake a hand, were shaking with the left hand, didn't know how to make eye contact, didn't know how to be confident in themselves, and we sort of looked at that as that's our job as teachers to sort of instill those skills in our children, and, and we were missing those, so we saw this program, we went and took a look at it, and we said we've got to be teaching that more than just our academics. We sort of missed the whole child, and we're focusing on the academics and not those soft skills of those real life things that are a reflection of our classrooms as well. So I think, you know, we as educators, we reflect. Mm -hmm. Each year we reflect and look back on, on what we've done, what we've accomplished with our students, and, and so it sounds like you looked at an area and said, you know, we could have done better here, so let's do something about it. And uh, it does sound like you did a lot of work over the summer to do that. Um, yeah. But, Joe, why don't you tell me a little bit about how has this initiative been presented to the students? So the first seven weeks, we based it off the uh, Seven Habits of Happy Kids, uh, written by Sean Covey. So each week we took a habit, and we taught them what the habit meant. It had a little story behind it, so they got to see how it is used in an everyday life. Um, and it was a children's book, so it was related to them. And then after presenting the habit, there was a guest leader, whether it was from the community or the school, a person of administration came in and they would talk about how their leadership role and the things they use in their everyday life that they are considered a leader and how the habit connects to their job. And then after the seven weeks, we took the, an activity that related to a habit, whether it was what you're in control of and what you're out of control of, or making win-win situations for problem solving rather than cause and effect. It gave them real life examples to solve in an example of and then getting the community to come in and talk to them about everything. So there were a variety of people that shared their experiences as well. Great. I got to talk about win-win. I loved it. <laughs> what did you get to talk about? Mr. I was able to, I was fortunate to basically kick it off and just talk about what leadership is, what it means to me, and how it impacts my job and my role as the principal. So I was very fortunate. Uh, I, to, to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting to be a part of it because this was an opportunity for our teachers to impart these qualities and this program with our kids. So, so I was very happy to uh, end up watch it grow from where, when the idea first originated late uh, last spring mm -hmm. to where it is currently today. And I'm excited as where it might go. It just seems to keep growing and building, and, and the excitement mm, continues does. to grow and build. Mm. So um, how have you included our school community um, so, in this? So as they mentioned, every week we've had a different leader come in and present to the students, and um, that's kind of served as a pillar for the initiative. I mean, every single week we've had somebody different from the community come in, so we've had the principal both assistant principals, a superintendent, um, coaches from the community, the custodian, um, curriculum instructing um, supervisors. And so we've had all these different um, figures from the community that the children could really connect with. And they came in and talked about um, how they see leadership and how they have leadership um, in the community. So that's been really nice to have that connection. And you've actually had some older students as well. Yep, right? students from the high school and 
So it's been really nice to for them to see like the real world application of it. Great. Um, what feedback have you received from parents and students about this? Um, this was fantastic. Parent teacher conference time comes around and most of the time we get questions on the curriculum and that wasn't so much the case this year. They wanted to know what we were doing on Monday mornings at 9 o'clock. They wanted to know what is this being proactive and students were coming home and saying, oh, I have to make sure that I think first or think of a win-win situation and the parents were like, what are you doing? And they thought it was fantastic because it is teaching to the whole student and it's a way to get them ready for what's coming up next with middle school and being able to deal with certain situations in a more positive way where they're thinking of others. Um, also not only parents but a lot of other individuals outside in the community have wanted to know and they're like we're hearing these amazing things coming in what is going on mm -hmm. so it's been a great opportunity for parents to get involved and take what we're doing as well as the community and bringing it home so they're taking these seven habits and they're applying it which is amazing that's, that's great that's yes. exciting as that's when that's when it truly makes a difference it's one thing to do something for those six hours that we're in school mm -hmm. but when it starts to permeate throughout. And that's what you ultimately were looking for. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're <laughs> it's succeeding. Working. And also, not just, so. not just that. They're applying it to their lives out, out of school and sharing mm -hmm. it at home, but also in school. I don't know if it's a, a coincidence. I like to think it's attributed to this, but the, as I handle the fifth grade discipline issues, that is significantly decreased this year in fifth grade. So... Whether that is a direct relation, I like to think it is, but it's nice to see that those qualities, because they're thinking of when, when, if they make a mistake, it's okay, they're 10, but the hope is to learn from it, but they're correcting themselves with the win-win theory that Joe was talking about a little earlier, so, so, yeah, I'm happy in that regard as well. Especially since you have that grade level. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how have you used Lead to Succeed initiative to connect with the community? So with the community, we've recently began a partnership with Enterprise Bank, and uh, the hope is that we're going to have uh, mentors come into each five of our classrooms and to meet with our students either once a week or bi-weekly. Um, we're still working out the logistics and that they're going to be a mentor for our classrooms, whether it's helping with our um, classroom karaoke or just teaching them a real-life skill that they feel that... Um, an applicant that would come to work for Enterprise Bank should have. Um, so we're building that relationship with Enterprise Bank and hope to create relationships with other community businesses in the future. Excellent, excellent. Um, what changes have you noticed in your students? Um, as Nikki and Tom had already said, we've seen a lot of improvement in their behavior and even when they do make mistakes, they're able to say, oh, well, I should have thought first and then, you know, one of the habits is seek first, understand, then to be understood. That's one of the ones that they pick up on a lot, and the win-win, making sure that they're thinking of their classmates and thinking of others. Um, so just that they're thinking about their behavior and that they correct it. Um, again, we see their study habits for at home. It's leading over into their home life, and they're coming in prepa more prepared for assessments. Um, and then just overall, the kids just seem happier. The kids that were more on the shy side towards the beginning of the year. Now that they have these habits in place, they're some of the most outgoing kids now, and they want to be involved in our classroom karaoke and be the star of the show where it was a kid that you kind of would have thought would have stayed quiet in the corner, but they have that confidence to you know, show, that, show what they got. Great. That's excellent. Um, how about you as teachers? What do you notice differently as yourself as teachers as a uh, result of this? There, so there's a few <laughs> things I've personally noticed. The interaction between myself and the students, the way you talk to them, it's everyone kind of seems like everyone is cared about, so they all want, it's a give and take. It's not like uh, I'm significantly above them and I look down on them. It's more of an equal level. And at the same time it's not just my class like I can people in all five classrooms know who I am it's not just like the door closes and all the students oh they are only in Mr. Harris's classroom I have kids from all sorts of classrooms saying hi to me this that and the other thing talking about the lesson that that I spoke about on Monday um, and it's not even this kid the students home life but my home life it's one of the first things I come home and talk about and it, it feels yeah. good to say something 
like extremely positive and the new things that we're doing and something that's different. So I notice it even in my life. And when I'm not being proactive, I'm the first the first one to hear about it from my entire class. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's it's interesting how things have changed. It sounds like a positive change. Oh, definitely. absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Good. So what do you envision the Lead to Success initiative? Where do you envision it going? I think at Karen Fornier might have described it best in one of our meetings when she said it, it's sort of right now it's an improv show for us. You know, mm -hmm. we sort of meet monthly, reflect on what was accomplished that month, what the students' needs showed us they might need for the next month of our lessons. So it's sort of a, a rolling snowball at this point that it just keeps getting bigger and bigger for us and it, it's getting more and more exciting. Um, it's brought all of us together really close. We work for the students and really focusing on their needs. And we've been very fortunate that when, when we came to Tom with this little idea last year and we said, we, we need you to buy us some books and we need some time to read and we need some time to reflect. And he jumped on board and said, you got it, I'll give it to you. And then you sort of jumped on board with giving us that community connection. So it's been sort of a, a flow for us at this point. We're not quite sure where it goes. I mean, I, I think we were happy that we had a spark Mm -hmm. And that sort of it, it sort of lit all of us up to okay, let's try something new. And we're sort of getting that feedback now in the school. We were fortunate enough um, last week we went to the school improvement committee and were able to share our ideas and our program with everyone else in the school. And, and you could see there was definitely a spark amongst others that they want to know more. We've started putting our lessons on the pineapple chart so that teachers have the opportunity to get coverage for their class so they can come and see what goes on at our monthly meetings. I think we're excited to see what sort of connections we can have with our community and how much of the community we can bring in to support our schools and our mm -hmm. Pelham Elementary and to see our kids have successful cope drives and Toys for Touch drives and really learn the benefit of them reaching out to their community and in turn their community reaching in to support us. I think it's going to show the students that we're all here for their success. So. We don't know where it's going to go. I think every month is a new journey for us, but we're just excited that it has kept rolling and rolling. And I think it's the students' enthusiasm that's really keeping us moving every mm -hmm. month. That's great. Um, and your actually, your Toys for Tots drive was extremely successful, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, we. What were the numbers? Two hundred and eleven okay. donations for Toys for Tots. Okay. From Excellent. About one hundred and seventy-five students. So yeah, that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, Wonderful. Mm -hmm. It was. I'm sure that uh, there'll be a lot of kids that will be very happy as a result of yes. that. Mm -hmm. And that's just another one of those lessons they kind of learn um, with this whole process. So, um, Tom, well, as principal, when you see something like this happen and a group of teachers get excited about this, <laughs> what, how, do, how does that make you feel? Or what do you? Well, initially with any new idea, I mean, going back, just think like Science Buddies last year, and then when mm -hmm. Carrie came to to me with this idea, yeah, you're a little nervous, but <laughs> and scared as to, okay, where could it go? What could, you know, what could happen? Because, yeah, it was uh, great on paper, and we were able to acquire the books that she mentioned for them to, to, to read, and they went on site to a school up in Manchester to see it in action, and, and Carrie's been keeping me in the loop. But it, it's exciting. I'm glad she mentioned school improvement, the school improvement committee last week. We were looking at going in a different direction. Since the old kneecap days when we were school in need of improvement, uh, we've always focused on what do we need to do better as opposed to, well, what do we do well? Mm -hmm. And let's focus on that. And so grade five was, was more than ready to jump on board and come meet with the team in the hopes of expanding it globally, at least, you know, at least maybe not building wide, but the older grades, grades three mm -hmm. through five. So it, it's just exciting. And to quote, I mean, you know, one of my favorite books, Teach Like a Pirate, it's, if you don't jump in the pool, if you just stand on the side and be a lifeguard and watch everyone and not take a chance, then you don't know if something's going to work. So that, that's been, it's been exciting. And I put my faith in, you know, we've tried a lot of new things in the last year mm -hmm. at Pelham Elementary. And, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting to see and it's catching on and it's, I'm, I'm not as nervous. <laughs> <laughs> And the teacher, uh, the students are clearly benefiting from that. So, I we, think you're going to see a lot of the students sort of, you know, we have an envision of where we want them to go. We want the students to be able to run their graduation this year. Mm -hmm. We want them to be the leaders, and it's their school. It's their successes that they're celebrating, and that's what we want them. And so the end of the year celebration, we want the students to be able to come together and plan and organize and run their own celebrations for their successes. Instead of us celebrating them, we want them to celebrate themselves and really take ownership. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been the biggest thing is we see our kids 
really taking ownership of their education and telling us what they'd like to do for activities and telling us, well, this worked well, this didn't work well, taking ownership of their classroom. I think this seating arrangement might work better. And it, it's just, just it's sparking our children. It, it's really, they're more excited that, for education. That part where I've started in my classroom where they do get to select their seat every Monday and mm -hmm. they get to choose what they want the arrangement to be, where they're going to sit. And just the other day I had a student come up to me and say, this isn't working for me, I can't focus, I'm talking too much, can I go sit somewhere else? So the simple fact that he was able to take that initiative first and realize what needs to be done, the steps that had to be done for it, was absolutely amazing. I don't think I've ever had a student that has ever come up to me like that before. That's and excellent. It, it, he's loving where he is now, and it's working. Great. And for him to see that, he was, as, as I told him, he was being proactive instead of reactive, and mm -hmm. I was, I'm very proud of him. Excellent. Very. And we're, coming, great we're coming to the school board later on okay. this year, and it's not going to be us coming. We're going to bring our students because we want our students to share their successes, and we want our mm -hmm. students to share what they've learned in those skills so that, you know, D.A.R.E. graduation comes around the end of February. It's going to be a totally different D.A.R.E. graduation this year. We're going to have students that are able to speak to the school board and really show that they're confident they've learned these real-life skills. So it's going to be, the, I think, the next transition for the second half of the year is the students will start to take ownership of the planning and the organization. So you're going to see more of our students. I believe that's Excellent. in March. I think we schedule that for March, our March school board. Excellent. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait to see what, what happens next. <laughs> I know this week was about one word. Yes. So yes. hopefully the students are, are working on what that one word is going to mm -hmm. be that they will pick to focus on next year. Very exciting, and um, it's only going to help them throughout life. And yes. it's not just something that is helping them this year. It's going to help them long term. So you're making mm -hmm. a significant difference in, in kids' lives for a long time, and that should make you feel good as teachers. So thank you for mm -hmm. taking the risk. Thank you for putting in the time and the energy to create something. And uh, thanks for inspiring success in our students. Thank and thank you for joining us for another edition of Pelham School District today.